things I do for this company. Hey everyone, Doug here with B&H and welcome again to my apartment. What I just lugged in was a monitor, but not just any monitor. It was the LG ultra wide 5K 49 inch monitor. Now behind me, you can see I have a dual monitor setup and that's my typical normal everyday setup for my workstation. I use one at work like that as well. I wanna see if an ultra wide monitor, and I've never used one before, can replace two monitors for productivity, image quality, and pretty much everything else that I do. Can it? Let's find out. That's okay, take your time. I'm gonna, I'll open it eventually. Only, only my gear. We're gonna time lapse this, right? I hope so. Okay. This is it. Oh yeah. Wow. Okay, so if you join me back here, you'll see that there are a few ways to connect this thing. There's two HDMI ports, one display port, and one USB-C port. Here is my workstation. Now I have a dedicated graphics card, which means my normal setup, which is two monitors, can be driven just fine. I have no problem doing it. I have a 4K screen, a 1080p screen. This though is only one. And if you're looking to expand your screen real estate without having too much of an impact on your system resources, especially your video memory, this might be a better option right from the start before you even consider picture quality. But for me, it really does come down to image quality. Things like black levels, viewing angles, color depth. That's what I look for because I work with video and photo. And a lot of you out there probably have the same questions. This is of course an ultra wide as they call it. And uh, it's actually wider than even most ultra wides that you do see out there already. Most of them these days are 21 by nine. This is a 32 by nine screen. It's 5120 by 1440 in resolution. So it's basically like having two 2560 by 1440 displays right next to each other with no bezel in the way, meaning you have a completely uninterrupted experience. I'm falling in love with this screen. All right, so here we are. So out of the box, uh, color looks pretty good, a bit contrasty maybe. I did lower the brightness a bit um, just for the sake of the video, but this is pretty much out of the box what you're seeing right here. And of course, on camera, you can't tell the color. But uh, I'm gonna look right now at Premiere and uh, look at this. I mean, this is, the entire lower portion of my screen is basically timeline um, and I can scrub through the whole thing. I, I have a really quick glance, even, you know, even when I'm zoomed in, I have so much to work with. If I was keyframing, this would be a great way to do it. Look at this, look at the size of this timeline. Isn't it, doesn't it inspire you to get stuff done? because it inspires me. Normally on a dual screen setup, I have the program dedicated to one window and the timeline and source material and bin all on one side. Uh, and that's fine, sometimes I do want this to be as large as I can get it, but most of the time I'm editing. One of the best things about a monitor like this is that because it's only larger resolution in one direction as compared to a traditional monitor that you would get, you don't really have to worry about DPI scaling and programs that don't have great support for it. In my case, I have a mixed 4K and 1080p setup, which some programs don't play well with. And also, some programs just don't really work well across two monitors because you have to drag panels across. Now, After Effects, uh, you know, the sky is kind of the limit with how you arrange it. Um, and I'm not a big After Effects user. I use it a handful of times a year, but um, the great thing is I can treat this kind of like a dual screen setup and have this be in a traditional setup and then have the After Effects window on the side here um, without, you know, again, without any uh, border between these two. Again, the real thing to me, the benefit is this timeline. That's incredible. So now let's take a quick look over at uh, some music production. Again, it's the same story. Um, I mean, if I, if I was able to compose this song uh, with a screen like this, it would have been a little different maybe. Um, I can see basically all my MIDI notes. Um, I can go out in, um, you know, I, uh, this is, 
this is nice. Now this is the only time where a 32 by 9 screen is kind of a downside because nothing's made for 32 by 9. So this is some straight out of camera footage um, and we're gonna full screen it. You can see, you know, there's a lot of pillar boxing going on here. Um, it looks great, the, the image is great, the colors are pretty good from what I can tell. Here's another great example right here of screen real estate. I have two photos open in Lightroom. Uh, they have different crops, but they're also different photos so I can choose for overall composition. Photographers, videographers, and pretty much any digital artist will really appreciate the fact that this is a 10-bit panel. It supports 99% sRGB, and it also supports HDR10 if you have an HDR ready setup. So, every so often I'm reminded of the power and versatility of USB-C. Honestly, the world should just switch by now. But, I happen to have LG's Gram. This is the 17-inch version. Uh, we reviewed the 15 a while back, but this is pretty much the same thing. Very nice, slim device. The reason I bring it out is because I want to show you that the monitor here doubles as a USB hub and can also supply power to the gram, or really any USB-C device. Uh, there we go. And if we look here, we can see that it is indeed charging. Now you might have noticed that the screen actually alerted me to the fact that a USB-C connection was detected. And that's because you can use the USB-C connection as an input source on the monitor. You can connect two computers to the monitor at once and then actually transfer files by dragging and dropping across a split screen either horizontally or vertically. LG also provides the on-screen controller software which is actually a very powerful solution to arranging your windows on screen or even multiple screens differently. This is a lot better than using the built-in window arrangements that you find in most operating systems and also means that you don't have to go through any of the hardware toggles in the monitor. I usually calibrate my monitor and leave it on my custom setting. I don't really use any of the other settings that you find on monitors. However, the on-screen controller can assign custom modes to particular programs. If you open Acrobat Reader, for example, the monitor knows to switch to its reader mode. Lastly, we should talk about games. Now, I'm doing a little less gaming these days, but Games on this monitor can look great if they support a 32 by 9 display. Now, the good news is that more and more games are supporting ultra-wide displays, so this isn't as rare as it once was. I gotta take back a lot of the negative stuff I've said about ultra-wide displays over the years. Sorry, everyone. I had, I had a, a blast using this thing. I mean, I've seen things I've never seen before. And yet, there's one thing one thing that I have to nitpick about, and that is the lack of a hardware color profiler. For a monitor geared so much towards production, video, and photo editing, and the fact that it has such a great 10-bit panel, it is a bit of a loss, um, and it's something I'd like to see in the next iteration. But otherwise, this is an amazing display, and I highly recommend it. This is Doug with B&H, and I'll see you next time. Bandit. Can you not? She's got toys in my desk and she knows it. <laughs>